Hey you guys, it's Bright tonight. We're here with a reaction to most of the recent podcast that Gypsy Rose was on. She went back on the Vile Files. This is her second time on this podcast. It's hosted by Nick Vile and he is receiving tons of criticism for having her back on the second episode that she's been on. Um, I am going to, like I said, react to most of this. The final the final little part, like she's over here giving relationship advice. We are not even going to allow her to share airtime if she's trying to give relationship advice because nobody is listening to her. But there are some interesting parts to this. So we're going to put it at 1.25 times speed because it is a very long podcast and we're just going to get right into it. So if you're interested in all of the nonsense that she spouted, on this podcast, then please keep watching. All right, you guys, I bumped up my um, light just a little bit because I felt like it was kind of dark. Um, but let's start at about the three and a half minute mark and go from there. By the way, for anyone who's wondering, this episode had 1.2 thousand likes to 1.9 thousand dislikes and yes the comments are full of people telling this podcast host exactly how they feel this is embarrassing why are you you know the first time i was like okay well you know she's fresh out of prison nobody knows how this is gonna go she's gonna do the press tour go on podcasts um, but we've seen exactly how all of it unfolded and you decided to go ahead and do this for the second time. So you deserve the criticism, but before I babble for ages, let's get into it. And did you watch our episode with, with Gypsy when you got brought up? Were you kind of out there kind of feeling a certain way? And then what prompted you to reach back out and, and start this beautiful relationship back up? Well, I think at first um, I had seen her Lifetime doc, um, Prison Confessions, where she talked about me like towards the end and um, like displayed some feelings about our separation and uh, talked about how it ended and um, it wasn't fully accurate. So like it, it kind of broke my heart to see her cry and see her have this um uh, you know, description of how our relationship ended. It made me just want to like set it, set it, set the record straight and like let her know like what the reason, the real reasons were at the time. I mean, this is going back five years ago. And so that kind of like prompted me to, to reach out. And, but it was more just like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm happy to see you out. I'm happy to see you smiling. I'm happy to see you thriving. You know, I wish you the best. And that was like the initial uh, point of contact. I guess, can you bring it, bring us? I find it to be very inappropriate that Ken or Christy or Gypsy would have allowed this line of communication to even happen that was so 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 disrespectful to gypsy's marriage with ryan and specifically disrespectful to ryan directly to allow a former partner to come back into the picture and christy kind of like you know, working overtime to make sure that the line of communication was not broken. It's just the ultimate sign of disrespect. I think it's wrong. I think it's inappropriate. Um, but I have said before, in my opinion, Ken saw Gypsy get out and automatically get all of this attention. And you could see that her popularity grew overnight with a lot of people now that she was out. And I think that Ken capitalized on that. Back up to speed in terms of what did Gypsy say about the ending of that relationship and what did you feel wasn't accurate? She had just said that like I had just like left her because um, like the, the, the media attention was just too much and like uh, all the like the, the like the fame behind it, like uh, articles and whatnot kind of scared me away. And that just wasn't accurate. That wasn't true. You know, I thought that this air was clear at the time, but it, I realized that it wasn't. So I wanted to set it straight and let her realize or let her know that like when we had separated five years ago, it was because a lot of people had been reaching out to me at the time, like big name people and just hundreds of regular people across social media, just like telling me that, like, you know, you need to allow her to have this journey of self-discovery and not give her another form of codependency, you know, having been through so much and not never really living her life on her own that, um, you know, she should allow her this time to get through her sentence and just allow her to build this self-identity. And that really like hit home with me. And I felt that to be true. So that was the reason why we had up. What kind of 
self-discovery are you doing from prison? She wasn't even working on herself. She was not doing therapy. She was not healing um, the past version of herself that used and manipulated a disabled man to kill her mother. She was not doing any of the work. So what kind of self-discovery or healing are you allowing her to do? Uh, I think that Ken realized, what on earth am I doing in a relationship with somebody that is in prison? I mean, and just for him, and the same applies to Ryan, to see mommy dead and dearest and then contact Gypsy, uh, can't relate. And then to be romantically interested in her, Rated. That makes sense. How was that for you, Gypsy, to hear that that was his reasoning instead of what you thought? That was very emotional. He didn't tell it to me. I had learned about this through Christy. Uh -huh. So Christy had told this, you know, everything to him and then relayed that back to me in a, a FaceTime call. And immediately I started crying. Like the emotions came up and I felt like all that resentment that I was carrying for all those years, because I mean, obviously I was displaying that um, in the last time that I was here. So, <laughs> um, you know, to learn that everything that I had based my, you know, opinions on of him was all not true. And so, I mean, it, it really touches your heart when you realize that that was a sacrifice that he made on his part, putting his own feelings aside and doing what was best for me at the time. Mm -hmm. And can you take us back to how y'all even met in the first place? Where, did you write to her? How did, how did y'all meet? Yeah, so I saw her original documentary by Aaron Lee Carr, um, okay. Mommy Dead and Dearest, and um, it was an unusual feeling I'd never really felt before. But after watching it, I just felt so much compassion and like very, a, a, a lot of sympathy for what she had gone through. It was such an, a unique and unreal situation and case. So I wrote her, I was 24 at the time, this is back in early 2017, and uh, I wrote her just a letter of just saying, hey, listen, like I saw your story. I want you to know that people out here, you know, myself, we, we support you and I hope that you're doing all right and wish you the best and just wanted to, you know, write you a letter and just let you know that you have supporters out here. And it was just like a one-off send. I didn't expect to hear back from her. And then I did. And then we just kind of started writing each other on the regular. Again, something that I've never done before or since then. Writing letters is so, is so interesting. <laughs> um, but I mean, we just, we really, I mean, had a lot to talk about. We had a lot in common, a lot of interests, li like-minded interests, things that were going on in our lives. I just, um, I feel like it was really easy for me to just uh, like, let let the walls down and just like tell her about my life as it was going here about how her life was going and uh just we established a great friendship just off of that yeah and um and yeah there was later <laughs> yeah, yeah at the beginning there was no like it wasn't like i wrote like-minded interests what on earth did you have in common with gypsy rose what what were the similarities because uh for for me i can't think of one thing that they would have had in common and if you're saying that you're personality is similar to Gypsy, then you have some diabolical traits that you need to get worked out. And it is so scary that both of them are um, literally sitting here and being allowed to run with this narrative. We're still trying to run with the narrative of poor little Gypsy, Dee Dee was this big bad monster and none of it is being questioned because like I was looking for a relationship or you know interested right. in anything like that it just it turned it just, it just yeah I mean the first time I met her which was in September of that year is when like I realized like yeah I really like I really like you a lot like oh, we, yeah. we actually have a lot in common the chemistry was was crazy and I think uh I mean I'm very self-aware to like how strange that looks to like the regular world but um the way I've always said it is that you know you just you can't decide how you feel about somebody and I mean, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking about you can't decide how you feel mm -hmm. about someone. Confession. When we were with you last time mm -hmm. and we got and you got brought up, mm -hmm. you know, with all due respect to your ex, I mm -hmm. couldn't help but wonder if you still like had a flame for Ken in that room. I didn't want to say it, obviously, <laughs> but it just the way <laughs> I didn't feel that at all. <laughs> I, you know, I actually, very much hurt my feelings. Yeah. So. No, I imagine, but it, it just felt like, you know, I, I talked to a lot of people mm -hmm. who are going through breakups and mm -hmm. relationships and it just felt like, you know. There, there was you, you, you felt a certain you had to put it this way you weren't indifferent about the guy mm -hmm. and i guess it just comes down you know mm -hmm. they don't they say what is the opposite of love isn't hate it's indifference and right. it didn't feel like you were indifferent about ken and um yeah so I if that makes was sense. Holding, <laughs> that I was just my vibe i was holding i was holding you know resentment but it's kind of like because i went on this belief that he had left me and i was brokenhearted and so i held that resentment but at the same time, I still loved him in my heart. And sure. so 
it was it was torn. My heart was torn. I imagine, obviously, since you've been out, uh, I, th- I think I heard you say something like the internet is like a uh, hell. Or it, it is. It is. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you'll get no argument from us. But obviously, and now and I do our best to stay off the internet and not read things about mm-hmm. us. It can be far more uh, easier said than done. Mm -hmm. I imagine you guys try to stay off as well, but specifically, I guess, Ken, too. I mean, I'm sure you are aware of the criticisms when you got back. It's like, oh, of course, he's coming back now, Mm -hmm. things like that. How do you deal with that? And, you know, I guess, what would you say to, I guess, any of the critics who, you know, still have Gypsy in mind and and worried about Gypsy and want to see her kind of figure herself out and say, Ken, this is too soon. What are you doing? Like, you know, what would you say to that? Um, Well, Gypsy and Ken both do not stay off social media. They don't stay offline. They are both incredibly bothered by the fact that there are people, tons of people that do not respect Gypsy. That bothers both of them. Gypsy wants to be able to use social media to make money and get attention and get likes and clicks and all of the positive things that can come with social media while saying the haters don't matter, the trolls are so miserable and bored and whatever. Um, so it's like, I want the positives, but I don't want anybody to be able to have an opinion about me that is negative. If you want to build a social media platform, you have to be able to realize that, especially when you're a Gypsy Rose, there are going to be a lot of people that actually despise you for what you did. And the fact that there has been so little remorse and so much given to her, that is why people continue to be upset. That and on top of it, she continues to lie in the opportunity she gets. Well, the first part of that is, or the, the first part to your question is, uh, as far as like the internet goes, like we, we do stay off of it too, like for the most part, or it's changed a lot over the last few months. I think in the beginning, I did want to go and like read comments a lot and a part of me wanted to be defensive and, you know, think that I could just uh, clear the air and just like set records straight. But that's just not really how the internet works. Mm-mm. And um, I think I've learned, yeah, never yeah. I've learned internet. that lesson yeah. now. It's like once they've made up their mind, it's like it, like, truth doesn't even matter. It's irrelevant. Mm-hmm. You know, speculation and drama is yes. where it's at. So, I mean, I don't read the Reddit pages anymore or the comments really anymore or even respond to them. So I just kind of uh, just focus on like the real world, like, like just our everyday life. And um, that's how I retain like my happiness and our happiness. Very mm-hmm. smart. So once you guys got back together, how, you know, when did things go from? Are there right. people online that exist that just so happen to really thrive off of drama, even if it's uh, fabricated and based off of lies? Yes, there are those people. But for the most part, the criticism that is going towards Gypsy Rose is simply saying she should not be allowed to be paid to be a public speaker at, at a university. She should not be sitting on a uh, stage of Fox News. She is being treated by so many people as if she actually was this meek little victim that escaped her mother. That is why people are upset. It's not you know, everybody is just like coming up with the most outlandish lies and being mad at that. Like, no, we're actually mad at who Gypsy is and the um, things that she's been given. Things that where my heart was. Um, and I had to realize and that like doing something for myself felt very um, wrong. And following my heart just seemed like... You know what a selfish thing to do is? It's um, a beautiful and manipulating a disabled man to kill your mother. That's what is selfish because she was too controlling. Remember, when she sat with Dr. Phil, it was not my mom was abusing me. It was if she had to describe Dee Dee, she would say that she was controlling. And as I've said many times before, Gypsy Rose has a problem with people trying to or attempting to control anything god forbid you tell gypsy to do something or um encourage her to do something that she doesn't want to do even if it's in everyone's best interest she will literally set your world on fire and watch it burn down while she runs to the next person that's waiting for her like a selfish thing to do and i had a really good conversation with my stepmom christy and She told me that, you know, after so many years of not being able to make my own choices and put myself first, 
that I should make a choice for myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though I'm- Gypsy has been making choices for herself for years, even before the crime. She made the choice for herself to get her mom out of the way. She made the choice to attempt to trap Nicholas Godijan with a baby. She made the choice to send Nicholas Godijan a promise ring similar to what she did with Ken. She made the choice to um, send Nicholas Godijan videos on how to carry out the plan. She has made her own choices. Let's stop acting as if she was literally put in put in a cell and you know throw away the key and she just hasn't ever done anything for herself. Wasn't really sure where his viewpoint of it was going to be. Um, I had to make a choice for the heart. And so that is when I'm like, okay, I realize where my heart is. I don't want to stay with someone just because they're happy. I need to be happy too. Yeah. And I think the selfish thing would have been um, to stay in a relationship and not let Ryan move on. So I ended the, the marriage, uh, filed for divorce, and then that's when Ken and I reconnected. No, no, no. See, the, the selfish thing that Gypsy did was she made sure that she had Ken lined up before she got away from Ryan. She has to have the next thing uh, kind of in her pocket, so to speak, before she will pawn off the person that she's using for that moment in time. And for that moment in time, she was able to use Ryan Anderson because he was a teacher. He would look good in front of the parole board. It would give her a better um, opportunity to get out of prison. He had a you know stable home, good job, all the good things. So she used him while she could or while she needed him. And then she realized, you know what? Maybe I can go back to Ken, but let me make sure that we are in communication and it seems like a good thing before I wreck my home with Ryan. It is very strategic. A strategic home wrecker, if you will. Did after the fact, um, as friends, we had a weekend together to see kind of where are we with this. Um, it was our first time actually having any outside of prison time mm -hmm. um and we realized that that flame that love everything is still there and that's simply not true she was talking to ken literally in mid-february so you didn't file for a divorce and move and then you reconnected with ken we know that that is just blatantly a lie so he came back to visit a month later um, and that's essentially the weekend that we got pregnant. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> yes, of course. I heard it's easier for women to get pregnant if they're more in love. Really? I, I, Did I, you make that up? I no, I, heard, I didn't hear it from a doctor. I okay. want to make that clear. Um, but it makes sense, right? The more I mean, more connected you feel. You that's know? the first I've heard that. That's interesting, though. <laughs> I bet there's some science behind it. I don't know. What I mean, I guess, you know, again, when we first talked to you, you had literally just gotten out of prison. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of our questions were centered around, you know, what do you what, what do you do in prison? Who are mm -hmm. you hanging out with? What have you been up to? I mean, like, what has life been like? I, if you could put yourself back to where your mindset was when you first got out, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, what? how have you changed as a person in this past nine months? Because I imagine maybe a lot. I have changed a lot. Um, I've had a lot of uh, life experience packed into 10 months. She's also become more arrogant because people like the University of San Francisco and these news channels, People News, uh, The Today Show, they give her a platform which feeds her arrogance. And in my opinion, I will agree with Becca Scoops on this. In my opinion, Gypsy Rose shows a lot of signs of being a malignant narcissist. And a lot of people say, you know, oh, take your time, take your time. And I, I meant to. I really meant to take my time. But it was kind of like that urge to just want to do everything all at once. And so I think by having those experiences, it has kind of shaped me in a way that I have. Do everything all at once. Doing everything all at once is getting pregnant, trapping Ken with a pregnancy, trying to trap Ryan with a pregnancy, trying to trap Nick with a pregnancy. This woman is obsessed with the idea of being pregnant. It is weird. But then she wants to wear things that are slimming and she doesn't want to look pregnant in her own words. It's very, what a, what a weird little gremlin she is. I've gained some maturity um, in certain aspects. For me, I, I try to stay focused on what I am going to be doing on a daily to make sure I don't get too ahead of myself. 
plan for the now, enjoy the now, appreciate the now. Because I think in the first few weeks of me being out of prison, I kind of hit the ground running and I didn't ha- have time to savor it in. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've been doing now. And of course, I've been working on my book. So enjoying the now, but allegedly Ryan Anderson has said that Gypsy still contacts him. So it seems like she's swaying this back and forth. Like she has to make sure that these two key players that, you know, are interested in her, she doesn't want to completely shut out anyone because I think she knows that Ken, in my opinion, is very quickly losing interest in this charade that she is doing. So it's like, is that why you leave a line of communication up with Ryan? Because that's the same thing that you did with Ken. God forbid Gypsy Rose is just, you know, single and minds her own business for a little while. You know, we finished filming our Lifetime series, um, I want to say, I think it was in May. Okay. Um, and then now we're currently filming again for a second season. And so we picked that up. And so, you know, again, the roller coaster ride begins. <laughs> uh, what did you guys do for your first official date? <laughs> <laughs> so like that first weekend that we reconnected um, was the very first weekend of um, April. and. Um, we were a little crazy and decided to go get uh, a matching tattoo. Saw those. Which, yes. Can we bring those out? Yes. Yes. A matching tattoo. Which I realized in hindsight was a little like reckless, but like in the moment there was nah. just so much like it. <laughs> in the moment there was just so much excitement. Getting a small and not very interesting tattoo is what Ken considers reckless. What about you being in a relationship with somebody that used a disabled man to kill her mother? I would call that reckless, but who am I? <laughs> I mean, we were just <laughs> going crazy a little bit, just happy to be with each other again. And like that first weekend that we met back up, it wasn't to like necessarily get back together. It was just, just to kind of see, okay, let's see how this weekend goes. So like, let's just meet up as friends and just see where the weekend takes us. And then that, that love flame got reignited for sure. And we realized like the chemistry is still there and we do have a lot um, in common and we still have a great time together. There's never a dull moment. So, uh, I mean, the tattoos were a little wild, but uh, <laughs> whose idea was it? That was mine. <laughs> now, do they make a heart if you put them together? We didn't actually re- put that together until oh. after the fact. Yeah. So I went looking on like Pinterest for cute husky tattoos. Um, and I kept, you know, seeing these very elaborate ones. I didn't want something that big. So I really, I have three tattoos. So I have one on this arm, one on this arm, and one on my back. Okay. And they're all like outlying tattoos. So I really like that style. So um, I found the huskies on Pinterest. And like mine's a little different. Uh, mine has. And the one on her back matches very closely with these wounds that were found on Dee Dee during her autopsy that's been covered at length before. Very scary, very grim, and I don't think it's a coincidence. A small little design on the side of it that makes it a little bit more oh, feminine. Yeah. Let me see. Roll your sleeve up. <laughs> See, yeah. I have oh, okay. that that makes it a little more feminine. Okay. Yeah, and so he and does. They're that, not in the, They're not the similar. They're tattoos. similar. They're, well, they're the exact same yes. minus this little yes. side <laughs> <That was design. laughs> and Honestly, if you were going to have them matching together, you would you would have gotten on different arms. Right, otherwise, right. You know, so. Yeah, because I have to like, pull my arm over yeah. to, to, You to really get. have to cuddle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. I mean, obviously, it's, I think it's safe to say the pregnancy was unexpected and unplanned. Very much so. Um, I I did not expect the pregnancy at all. Um, I mean, obviously, there was some physical symptoms that came about around that time. And um, then I had taken a test and it came back positive. I was very shocked. Becca Scoops recently did a video all about Gypsy's pregnancy and it's very well done. But it's all of us know that this was planned. You were literally being tested for your fertility at your OBGYN. That is not something that you do if um, you are not trying to conceive. Gypsy has been obsessed with being pregnant. Her own father said that she wanted a baby. He said it to Ken's face. I'll link that pregnancy video down below that Becca did. She has a history and a pattern of attempting to trap men by getting pregnant. It is an obsession for her, and she finally caught Ken by allegedly being pregnant, unless it's Ryan's baby, and we won't know that until after the baby is born. At first, I, I, was, um, I was looking at it, and I ran into the living room, and I'm like, Chrissy, what does this say? <laughs> Because I wanted confirmation that it, you weren't crazy. I wasn't yeah. crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I FaceTimed with him, and I told him, and, you know, how did you feel? Because yeah, I, like, I gotta say, my reaction <laughs> awful, terrible. terrible. We'll never talk about it. We'll yeah. never show the video. It's <laughs> so bad. Yeah. How was yours? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I mean, I was like getting ready for work. It was very shocking. I think my jaw just dropped. I was like, oh my God, like for real. Like, is, have you taken more than one test? Like, are we sure about I this? Took two. She took two. So I think that just like this realization just hit me like, holy shit. Like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to swear. <laughs> but, like, okay. but I was like, I can't believe it. Like, that's crazy. I mean, I think that like, I, I would agree with the sentiment that yes, it was b- very much too soon. But at the same time, like it's, it's, it's a child. It's a blessing. I mean, like, I, I think I had a, like a whole cocktail of emotions in that moment. And I think I needed a minute to process. I mean, even after the initial shock, I was like, let me call you back in like 10 minutes. I just feel like <laughs> just walk around and like breathe for a minute and realize like, holy hell, this is happening. Yeah, um, no, but like a, not like in a negative way, well, you know, but just like. And I know, do want to clarify yeah. when yeah. Natalie says my response was was terrible. It was just not, she wanted to do, she, she kind of set it up because, you know, we weren't like, it wasn't like we were not trying. We were just more like, Let's see. I don't know. You know yeah. We had heard how you know so many of our friends had a hard time mm-hmm. getting pregnant. You hear all those stories. You know, we we're like, you know what? I don't even know if uh, boys can swim. You know, it was more like right. you know, you know, you, I, I you get older, thing, you're kind of like, I don't know. I'm, it's not you know, and uh, right. and then Natalie had set up this. Um, she's like, let's 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 do like a let's show people one of our recipes, and I was like, oh, okay, and I got really excited about mm-hmm. it, so I got really into it, and then I like opened too it. into it. Yeah. Like he was like, all right, stop the camera. I'm like, no, no, we'll just keep it rolling. We'll show this part. He's like, no, it's fine. Let's cut it off. I'm like, no, please open the drawer now. We'll keep it rolling. <laughs> and then there's a pregnancy test, and I just kind of was like froze. And-, and it's like she took the plan B with Ryan, and you know, broadcast that on Lifetime, and now you're sitting here, Gypsy's gonna do exactly what she wants to do and i don't know once the the shock wore off what conversations did you guys have in terms of you know what what are you guys going to do because obviously you know bringing a child in this world makes it moves things very quickly whether you want to go slow or not you have to start obviously considering Mm -hmm. someone else your child uh even before yourselves how did you guys deal with that pressure well i know for me um you know the excitement was there, all those emotions were there, but the conversations that were had afterwards was um, more about the technical things. So I am still living um, with my parents in Cutoff, which is an hour away from him. So we're like, and I'm going to be living there until I'm off of parole. So we're like, okay, how is this going to work whenever the baby's born? Like, how many days could I spend with you? And how many days can you spend with me? And allegedly, it has been said that Ken is now living with Gypsy, Rod, and Christy. I don't know if that's true. I would not be surprised at all. But again, we're going to continue with the lies. We're going to continue with the, oh yeah, we're living separate, even though we're always together um, because she is on parole. And unless it's exposed in some other fashion, people are going to believe the lie. You know, who will she be with? Um, as you know, we're going back and forth and we're doing kind of essentially co-parenting, even though we are together. Um, but are you restricted like in terms of your parole, what are your restrictions that you have to abide by? The standard. I mean, there's basically just standard ones, um, you know, travel permissions and stuff like that. So my current residence is established with my parents. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of those things. So, um, having that restriction in particular, um, poses an issue. Um, and so that is a, you know, something that we had talked about extensively. And also, I mean, this is a new relationship in a sense, even though we have a history behind our relationship and a foundation, we're just getting back together after a five year separation. Mm-hmm. And she is calling a foundation to a relationship, a jailhouse prison fling. That's your foundation that you're bringing a child into. That is very scary. May everything positive may everything positive help this child because this child is being brought into an absolutely chaotic unhinged disastrous situation by having gypsy rose as its mother i've grown he's grown um who are we now and it's it's kind of like the weekend that we had together it was magical but in a sense it was a honeymoon phase all yeah. over again yeah. So it's kind of like, I need to know how you react to conflict. How, what are your parenting goals? What are your parenting skills? Like, you know, what are, what are your um, thoughts for the future? Those are all really significant conversations um, that couples usually have, you know, well into a year of their relationship. And here we are a month in and we're already pregnant. So um, they, those were really serious conversations we need, needed to have. And also, I never wanted to make him feel like he is stuck with me. That is not what I want. I'm like, if, you know, I want you to be with me because you are happy in this relationship, you want this relationship, 
just because we have a child together does not mean you're obligated to stay with me. There are lots of options for us. You know, if you don't want this child, I will be I will be the mother. That is my responsibility. That that's your choice if you want to be you want to show up. Mm -hmm. To the critics who struggle with you having a daughter, what is Mm -hmm. your response to that? Like what, you know, do you Mm -hmm. say you aren't ready or say, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I'm sure they have a long list. What is your response to them? I mean, finding out that I'm going to be a new mother, um, you know, that is not something that I don't think anybody could honestly say I am ready for. Um, you know, maybe few are, but when it happens, you're kind of like, gosh, am I really ready for this right now? Um, I don't have concern of, of any kind that my, uh, that my trauma from the past will affect my ability to parent. Okay. Um, I have a lot of great women in my life. Um, I have my stepmother, Christy. I have friends, um, his mother. Um, I'm very close with his mother. So I have all these strong women. Your sister. She yes, my sister. Like a very... she, and, and, and she is, um, she's graduating nursing school in December. Oh, wonderful. And so she's specializing in uh, labor and delivery. Wow. So, you, you know, I have a lot of these wonderful women figures in my life to help guide me. So if I have any questions, mm-hmm. I can just go to them. <laughs> okay. How did it feel, Ken, when, when Gypsy came to you and said, uh, you know, exactly what she said in terms of in what capacity she wanted you in her life? Um, well, like going back to that moment of uh, like... It's me- just so ridiculous that she's even out of prison. Uh, at this point, that's kind of the opinion that I have. It, it's not just the fact that she's been given platforms and attention and interviews and been treated like a celebrity at this point i'm sitting here thinking how dare you sit here and you are out of prison gallivanting all around shoving it in everyone's face while nick could be spending the rest of his life in prison realized we were pregnant like for me it was like okay well it's time to buckle down now and be get prepared to or start to prepare to be a father so at the time I was living in Dallas, I was living in a house. I had a full-time job that I had been at for over two years. Um, and I realized that, well, you know, it's time to time to move. You know, I, I need to be in, in Louisiana to be as close to her as possible to get her, to, you know, so we can be together to get through this process. You know, I don't want to just leave her alone mm-hmm. to to handle a first-time pregnancy. I left my job. I, I had to break my lease and I packed all my stuff and I moved to New Orleans to start a new life here. And, um, and I've been happy ever since. I mean, uh, yeah, the the parole is a little bit tricky, you know. So we like like she said, we can't live together. And you're, like you're legally not allowed to legally not allowed to. Um, How long are you on parole for? Um, until June of next year. Okay. Okay. Let's talk. And about there's that. no exceptions for. Who do you think paid for Ken to break his lease? Because you can't just go to like your um, landlord or your property manager and say, "Hey, I'm moving out next weekend." You know, I. I uh, need to go to this, you know, murder that I'm dating down in Louisiana and they just let you go. That's not the way it works. You typically have to pay to get out of your lease. And I guarantee you pathetic little gypsy here was like, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll pay for that. No problem. I'll pay for that. I'll pay for your move. And that's it. The fact that you're having children together. There's no exception for that. What Um, if you got and not to add yep. any pressure, <laughs> but what if you got married? Then we could. Then we Te- could. Technically, yeah. then we, we could. could. Okay. So. And I'm assuming those are conversations you guys deliberated over. We talk about it for yeah. sure. I, you know? I have my own opinion about that, which I have shared. Um, Can you I, share with us? <laughs> I I don't like having those conversations. Okay. Number one, I'm, I'm still going through the divorce, which will be finalized sometime this month. Okay. Um, however, I'm not the type of person to say, okay, just because we're having a child means you have to marry me. I'm not the type of person to tell you how to live your life. Like, I don't want to be that person to say, you will marry me. You will, you know, I will move in with you. Uh, he has his own life. And if he wants to marry me, he will propose. He will make his own decisions based on what he But she bought him a promise ring. We've had that conversation before. So uh, no pressure, but I'm going to give you a promise ring, just like I got Nicholas Godejean a, a ring. Gypsy, stop lying, girl. The, the lies just stack up every time you open your mouth. I could see them once her divorce is final from Ryan and she has this baby. I could see them getting married very, very soon after the baby is born, if not sooner, so that they can live together, even though allegedly they're already living in the same house. Wants to do so I don't put my input in. Okay. okay. So you moved to New Orleans, you got a new job, mm-hmm. you got a new place. Mm-hmm. How is it being um, so close to her? 
it's great. Yeah. I mean, she's only an hour away, so we get we get to spend a lot of time together. Um, and uh, we get two days a week. She's allowed to stay at my house, and then the other five, she's got to be back home. Okay, um, not bad. So yeah, it's not too bad. And uh, like I said, it's only an hour drive, so it's not that crazy. And um, I think the only part that I'm most worried about is in January when the baby's born. Obviously, we'll still have five months left of parole. So that's going to be really tricky co-parenting with this um, with these restrictions. To my knowledge, I don't think that Gypsy has received her driver's license yet. So Ken's trying to say that he's driving an hour all the time to come see her because, I mean, unless she's getting a ride from Christy or Rod, how is she going to see him? What a weird adolescent, cringy little dumpster fire this is. And there's a poor child that's going to be brought and put right in the middle of it. You a little bit of encouragement there. Are you planning on breastfeeding? I am. Okay. You, re I mean, I you can help. You, yeah, yeah. You, you can wash the bottles, you can wash sure. the pumps. But yeah. like for the first, I mean, five months, that's mm -hmm. you and that baby are really, you're Connected. just, you're just some extra hands that can help. But, <laughs> but Gypsy is really. Ken gets a little defensive here. It kind of made me laugh. She's trying to give advice to, to them and like Ken gets kind of annoyed. Ken gets annoyed very easily. I can tell you that he has a short fuse. You can see that displayed through his own actions and words, whether it's on Gypsy's Live or in a setting like this, his fuse tends to burn a little bit quicker than other people. All that baby really needs for the while well, I, so yeah i mean but at the same time like i want to be be there for her to get of her course. through those yeah, you know of course. constant interruptions throughout the night having to wake oh, up yeah. and you know like just just <laughs> uh, she's being uh, her being a first-time mother i mean us being both first-time parents you know i just wanted to be there for that difficult process of the first six months i mean the first 18 months i hear is the most difficult part how often can you stay at her yeah, house that's right. is that so like, i can stay at her house whenever, whenever i want okay. um but you know if if i'm working it doesn't you know it, it doesn't really work out that well yeah. what are you doing for work Bartending. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the show, of course, which is also like in its right, a full-time job. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I mean, like, that's just the, the part that I, I worry about a little bit, but I feel like we're going to be able to navigate that with our support system pretty well. Yeah. And I just, but, but mostly my main concern is I just want her to feel supported. I think you guys will figure it out. And just one outsider's opinion, I really commend you Gypsy for, it, it seems clear, you know, and I think even when I first met you, uh, how intentional you are to try to make good decisions mm -hmm. and try to make good and healthy choices. We don't always do that even when we try, but it's clear that you're making that effort. And it's clear, like even before, that you continue to do the work and mm -hmm. you're making difficult decisions. I mean, having a kid is the most real shit anyone can face, right? right. Um, having a kid with someone that you just got back together with, you're not married, you're going, you know. She also knows that this kid is going to be an extended paycheck for her because she can use the child for, um, a photo shoot with People Magazine, and uh, like I've said before, this child will absolutely be on social media because Gypsy Rose is going to become a mommy vlogger. That is the only thing that she has left is go the family vlogging route. There have been a lot of options and choices that you could make for short-term ease, mm -hmm. and it's clear to me that you're making choices where you're not just thinking about today and tomorrow, but you know you're one of making healthy choices not only for you but for the both of you mm -hmm. and for your child. And I think that's that's really great. You know, it's not it's not always going to be easy in the short run, mm -hmm. but you guys will figure it out. And I love that you want to make choices based off of what's best for you in the long run, mm -hmm. and and not putting pressure on the relationship or pressures on Ken or mm -hmm. in expectations that ultimately will make you question the sincerity of things. And I, I commend you for that. Thank you. And we are. We have um, taken on couples therapy. Okay. And right. so, um, you know, currently we're doing this sort of, it's like a couples therapist mixed with a parenting therapist. Okay. So cool. it has a little bit of both in there. And so we just started that not long ago. And, you know, I really wanted to do that because I, I still do my individual therapy um, on a regular. And so I'm like, but like, there's so much that is. So she's sitting here taking a compliment that she doesn't put pressure on anybody while she has attempted to trap multiple men with pregnancies and add extended pressure by saying, oh, here's a ring, Here, here's a promise ring. Like, what do you think that's going to do? Do you think that's just like a another day in paradise? Like, here's a ring? You think that's not pressuring anything? It's being put on us right now. And on the relationship that I'm like, you know what? How about we start couples therapy? and see how it goes, see if we like it. And I think it would be beneficial. And I'm enjoying it. I feel very open to our therapist. And 
Do you like it, Ken? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. interesting. I've never done couples therapy before, so it's a it's a new thing. But we do it. I, yeah, I, it. I think it's yeah. great. I mean, it's a way to communicate like anything that you're like withholding, mm-hmm. you know, which I think is very normal for for a lot of relationships, you know, to to hold things in and just it's allowing you that opportunity to have that open communication and realize things you may or may not be doing wrong. I think is very healthy and great. And um, I've I've really enjoyed our. We've only had two sessions so far. We go every other week, and um, it's it. She mentioned that therapist thing like literally two months ago, I feel like. Now Ken is saying they go every other week and they've only been twice, which would equate to a month. So that timeline to me makes no sense. Sound off down below. What do you think? It's getting us ready to be parents as well, but Mm -hmm. also helping us navigate our relationship, um, just getting back together and having a lot on our plate. And um, yeah, it's been great so far, honestly. I like it. Gypsy, we kind of watched you go back and forth with Ryan on social media. Mm -hmm. At what point were you like, I'm done with this, I've got to stop? I mean, honestly, I have been trying to have a very civil conversation with Ryan about everything because we don't communicate often. And I think that I really just wanted to have that, you know, closure, that one conversation that kind of closed everything up. And I, you know, we had that. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm in a a, a place of uh, higher healing and um, an elevator. No, you just did what you wanted to do. So... Ryan is feeling hurt and betrayed by you. And you want to say that you're in a place of higher healing? That's because you did what you wanted to do. You screwed who you wanted to screw. You moved where you wanted to move. And you left Ryan as wreckage of your past. Why would he want to have a conversation with you? Let's not blame it on higher healing. You were content because you got exactly what you wanted by leaving yet another one in the dust. At least Ryan made it out alive. He and Pixie are over there li- living their best lives and I could not be happier for both of them. Did healing than he is right now. And so I've kept my distance, um, hoping that he could find that happiness and that healing for himself. What I want for him is to find his happiness in whatever form that is. And I encourage that. I have no ill will towards him at all. I wish him the very best. But any communication right now is just not in the best interest of our... But Ryan says that Gypsy is still reaching out to him. So either Gypsy's lying or Ryan's lying. And we know that Gypsy's a pathological liar. Our healing. And it's got to be hard to get on social media and see someone you were married to Mm -hmm. talking about your relationship to a bunch of strangers. It's got to be... It is difficult because I really, I don't talk about it. Um, Like I'll go on TikTok and... I'll do my lives and stuff, but I just really don't want to talk about it. Yeah, it, it makes sense. And, you know, breakups are difficult and mm-hmm. everyone kind of goes at their own pace. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, it just, it's tough, but you move on. Yes, exactly. Last time we spoke to you, again, you just got out. So it was, everything was new. But what are, what are you enjoying? Like, what is, what are things that you've, oh my God, this is exciting and new. Like, you know, what, what are things that, you know, maybe we are taking for granted that you've discovered where this has been like fun or guilty pleasure yeah, you know, food. TV, yeah whatever food it is has been, <laughs> been that <of> food <laughs> so uh ken has had me try various foods oh, uh, i tried octopus not long ago okay. i didn't like it <laughs> um, she doesn't like anything <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I like ken. some things but um you know definitely i think i've gotten a lot more pickier in my pregnancy <laughs> Well, that makes, that makes <laughs> yeah, it definitely changes your the smell of stuff. You're like, mm, yes, I don't like my, that. my palate has changed a lot. Um, but, you know, honestly, I just kind of love catching up on new shows and old shows. I still have a list that, you know, I still haven't gotten around to watch all the shows that we talked about on the last podcast. <laughs> what, what have you watched? You know, 90 Day Fiance. I watched still a, love I still yeah, love that show. I still love 90 Day Fiance. We love what we love. Uh, yeah. yeah um, but like, I, I've been getting into... Um, like movies that I would have never, like he's had me watch movies I would have never watched before. Nick does that um, to me too. Yeah. So what was that one that we watched together? Ooh, um, we watched a lot together. <laughs> <It> so, was, <laughs> this is so yeah, me. One. This is so me. <laughs> I'm like, it was with that guy. The last he was... stop in Numa County, wasn't that? Oh, that, that was a, uh, we watched that both for the first time together. Yeah, just... I mean, like I, some of these movies I would never watch before, but um, he's taking me out of my comfort zone and trying new things, new foods, new movies. So that's, you know, trying new things is the theme. We're waiting for Chris. She's never seen Home Alone before. Yeah, no, I've never seen Home Alone. Oh, yeah. That'll be fun. Gypsy, Christmas when you do that, you should document that. <laughs> okay, you should, like, do a little, you know, document it. <laughs> maybe share it on social media. It's a, okay. it's, it's charming. It's okay. a great, good for you, Ken, for making your way for Christmas. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all the holiday yeah, movies, yeah. like the Halloween movies. Uh-huh. We watched uh, Fright Night. Um, couple, she didn't Hocus like it. Pocus? <laughs> Have you watched Hocus Pocus? Oh, yeah, that's a classic. I just got around to watching the second one. What has been your favorite holiday to celebrate so far? Because so far, they're all been kind of firsts in mm-hmm. terms of being out of 
prison. They really have. Um, you know, my birthday, actually, I know it's not holiday, but, it's not um, holiday. you know, in the past, birthdays for me have been complicated. And in prison, the last eight and a half years, my birthdays have been nothing more than my roommates making me a paper card. So um, my family, my dad, Christy, um, you know, they all had us a little luncheon for my birthday. And then Ken had taken me to the Ritz Carlton. I'd for- love to hear somebody that served time with her disprove that because I have a feeling this is just like, oh, let me, this is a good opportunity for people to feel sorry for me. I only got a paper card when I was in prison. But if she actually had like cellmates that she was friendly with, based on what I've heard happens in a lot of prisons, those people that you're close with come together. There's people that make cakes in prison. They do handmade gifts. They do all kinds of stuff to uh, make holidays special. But what is it, if not another opportunity for Gypsy to say, oh, poor little me, I've never seen Home Alone and I got paper cards, please. Oh Fancy my dinner. god! Okay. Tell her, tell her what you ordered. What? I ordered French fries. Oh, she oh. ordered French fries. <laughs> that sounds and, like and, and a Caesar salad. Yeah, it was a well, Caesar girl salad. dinner. That's perfect with like yeah. Diet Coke or something. It's perfect. <laughs> and then, and it was so sweet. So he made me a cake as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he burnt the first one, and so he had to remake yeah. it. Love. Like he, there was so much love that went into that cake. <laughs> oh, I thought was it was so sweet. Prison, the first one of the first birthdays you had that you knew your age? Going it into was, okay. it was. So, you know, once I, you know, once I was told my real age, then I was able to start celebrating and getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Fun that is. Yay. Did, you, did you think you were younger or older than you were? Originally, when I got arrested? Yeah. Uh, yeah, younger. I, I assumed that I was younger. Yeah. When you found your real age, were you like, what's this? She knew her age because she said her age in her police interrogation. Another lie go back you know how i really feel about it it's like when i celebrate a birthday i'm kind of like you know god how did i get so old so fast uh, yeah. sure. <laughs> like i was just 16 exactly <laughs> That's funny. i mean she's obviously had a different life than i have but i still feel the same way i'm like, i can't believe i'm 32 now like yeah, i just had a birthday i choose to ignore it usually oh, well, yeah. happy late birthday thanks <laughs> yeah. you got a new nose mm-hmm. congratulations thank you was there any sort of underlying anxiety just from your trauma going mm-hmm. into a facility and going under anesthesia mm-hmm. and getting a surgery? There was a little bit. Um, not. I'm going to skip over the part where she talks about her nose because I just really don't care. And I'm also going to skip over where she gives the Kardashians a bunch of praise and, oh, they were so nice. It was so fun. Um, because Gypsy, you are not friends with the Kardashians. So let's get into baby expectations part. Your dad kind of randomly was like, kids, babies, wait, she wants a baby, but let's wait. <laughs> what was his reaction when four weeks later you were like, hey, dad? <laughs> <laughs> so I had a I had a FaceTime call with my dad. I told him via FaceTime because he was at work. Okay. Um, and so his reaction was stoic at first. And like he just kind of Rod realized that she had pulled off exactly what she had been plotting. I don't really care for Rod, but he saw exactly what she was scheming. She he saw the scheme. He saw exactly what she was doing. And he probably thought, oh, well, sucker Ken. He's stuck, you know, assuming that it's Ken's baby, of course. Nodded. And he was (laughs) like, "Okay, congratulations. I'm, I'm happy for you. Okay. And I'm like, because I mean, that was the, the forefront of my mind. I kept going back to that one thing that he said. And he said it so randomly. I have no idea it like, so random. where it came from. Before that, he's like, you know, I'm going to talk to you and Ken together. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but I'm going to talk to you all together. And I was like already kind of feeling something was going to come up. Um, but I did not expect that. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> I think we all were like, whoa, OK. <laughs> did you get the talk, Ken? I did. I mean, you guys saw it on TV. Like that was that was like unedited at the end. Like, that was like, what we, yeah, he was just like. And she was knowing good and well that she was going to be tested for her fertility. As Rod said, she wants a baby and that whole conversation happened. Gypsy already had the plan laid out just like she had the plan laid out when it came to Nicholas Godichon and Dee Dee and her leaving Ryan and making sure that Ken was lined up. Everything is a plan to serve her. She wants a baby. Just be careful, you know, and um, and I, I was I was listening. I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah, we don't you know, that, that'd be, that would be way too soon right now. You know, 
we're just reconnecting. And we agreed about that. Like, we yeah, were, we, I we totally were agreed, totally you know, agreeable. And, and I was sincere about it. But uh, life happens and <laughs> uh, didn't expect it. But, you know, once I heard the news, I was um, I'm ready for it, you know, or I'm I'm excited for it. I mean, yes, of course. Was it fast? For sure. But I'm still like, I'm still excited. About, I'm so happy about it. Good. Good. What, you know? what are you most excited about in terms of being a mom? Honestly, I'm most excited about um, sharing things with my daughter that like I didn't get to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like all those little milestone moments. Um, I'm so excited for um, even now in my pregnancy, I'm like, I always look at the apps. Um, I'm like, okay, she's as big as a grapefruit or something, you know. Yeah. Um, and now I do that all the time. <laughs> she's she's, she's so grapes fun. right now. Yeah, oh, it's like a whole bunch of grapes. grapes. I never really understood that. Chart, I don't by either. The way. I was like, what do you mean a grape? <laughs> <laughs> so what is it that Gypsy didn't get to do? Because honestly, as a kid, she experienced things that many kids do not experience. Multiple trips to Disney, going on... Um, you know, to meet celebrities and singers and getting a free house and a free car. Let's not act as if Gypsy was literally locked into a small closet and never got outside of her house. She got to experience so many things that there are a lot of kids that never go to Disney. They never have their birthday celebrated. They never get to, you know, um, go on vacations. If you didn't know anything about her, The way that she delivers her story, you would swear that she was like handcuffed in a closet and Dee Dee was just unleashing terror every single day on her. I thought we were in Apple last week. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they grow weird. Yeah, it's different. The apps are different. But um, but it's kind of like all of those little things that, you know, I wish I could have had growing up. I want to give to my daughter. I think you even mentioned last time we talked when you were just speculating about the possibility of one day being a mom. But Mm -hmm. obviously at some point, you will have to have a conversation with your Mm -hmm. daughter. You're a long way away from that, obviously. Mm -hmm. What thoughts have you put into that? Um, And do you have a a plan of how you might address your past with your daughter? Yeah, of course. I mean, that was something that's been on the forefront of my mind even before I got pregnant, um, is that conversation is going to come up someday. And how do I want to address that? How do I want to handle that? Um, And I feel like when she is of the right age to understand we are going to sit her down together. And also with my dad and Christy, you know, we'll, we have that support there. The conversation is not going to come up. Her child is going to learn about it through social media, an article, a website, somebody out in the real world talking about it. And a lot of people have said, you know, once this kid is in school, then other kids are going to say, oh, your mom's Gypsy Rose. She, you know, is a murderer. Or who knows what they'll say? Kids know a lot. Um, but I think that she is going to homeschool her kid and I don't think that she's going to allow her child to be out in a public school with people where Gypsy is not in control of the situation. I think they are going to try to hide that for as long as they can. And Hey, you decided to do what you did and now you're deciding to have a child and it sucks that that kid has you as their mother. I want to explain things in a way that's not overwhelming, but enough to where she understands where my life was at at that time and how did I get there? Because obviously I didn't get there overnight. So um, with that being said- At the right age, this kid's going to know long before whatever that right age is. With love and care and consideration. I mean, we have a long time to prepare for that. Uh, to know what words need to be said, mm-hmm. but also, you know, that why that's why it was so important for me to also write my story in a memoir because she could read it for herself and see that where your life was at that time. What do you mean that Dee Dee was telling you that you couldn't run around town and sleep with adult men? Dee Dee was telling you that, um, you know, hey, oh my God, I'm gonna actually cover for you because you just tried to kill me with a BB gun. Like, what what are we talking about here? how you're going to try to explain the justification of why you killed your mother. But let's also talk about why you used a disabled man to take care of it for you. You know, I'm not this monster. I'm not the person that they say on social media. I'm not any of those things. My memoir is a true form of of my soul and everything that I had been through. Um, So... I am taking all of these steps to make sure that she has every source of information she needs. Your child at some point in time, forget your memoir, they're going to look at the documentaries and they will 
at a certain point have access to the case files and real evidence and the real facts and it's not going to be a pretty situation and I feel for the kid because that's a lot to unpack and you're going to have a, a parent that is trying to control the narrative while you see all of these facts laid out. That's going to be really tough. It's from the right places. Yeah, I was going to ask if she wants to watch any of these shows or documentaries. Is that like, a, why don't you just read my book? Yeah, first? you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I fully encourage looking at someone's life in the most truest form. So I'm in support of documentaries. So if she wants to watch my documentaries, yeah. I'll let her when she's old enough. Right, right, right. <laughs> and and reading my book that's, yeah. and, and talking to us. Like, I'm an open book. He's an open book. Um, any questions that she has, we want her to feel comfortable to ask us. Is there any part of you that... You're not going to be able to control the narrative forever. You're not going to. Um, people figure it out. And it's just like people out here in the real world. We saw one side. We saw the other. And... A lot of us saw exactly what happened and that's why Gypsy Rose had supporters initially and now she does not have as many as supporters as she did when she got out. Thinks about the relationship your mom would have with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for me, it is heartbreaking because I do from time to time think about what could have been. Um, and do you also think about the fact that you're the reason she's not here? Your decision, your blueprint of the, you know, what you thought was going to be the perfect crime, you are to blame. Don't call it heartbreaking when you're the one that formulated the whole thing. It makes me sad. So I kind of put that in the back of my mind. And so, I mean, there has been questions on social media. Everybody asks the question, you know, what are you going to tell your daughter whenever grandma isn't around? You notice how she says, oh, it's sad, but... There's no change in her voice. There is no, um, I've never even seen her have a tear in her eye when she talks about Dee Dee. And I think that is what's sad. And I said, I, my response to them is that Christy has become more of a mother to me than my own mother was. So Christy is going to be grandma. Yeah. Um, and so that question really won't be a pest in our face. It's also a, they think. a bullshit question. I mean, a lot of people, unfortunately, have had grandparents pass away. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, unfortunately, like River, our daughter, mm -hmm. won't be able. You know, she has one grandparent mm -hmm. around. It's as a bullshit. Great grandparent. Great grandparent. She's got both of oh, her. Sure. <laughs> my parents and your Sorry. parents are both alive. <laughs> yeah. my parents. I'm an asshole. <laughs> but, but, you but having a grandparent die from natural causes or old age is different than you being the one that plotted their unaliving and you used a disabled person to do it. Those two are not even comparable. Nick File is an idiot. Grandparents yes. around, it's mm -hmm. a bullshit question. Mm -hmm. It's it's an unfair question, mm -hmm. but I mean, thank you for, for answering it. But are, are there other questions or comments out there that, you know, not that you ever need to address, mm -hmm. but annoy you that you almost want to feel compelled to to answer because you, you don't like what people are suggesting? Oh, of course. I mean, I get, you know, negative comments all the time. And the the one thing that I just irritates me is the fact that people really have this stigma on, you know, new parents that have come from a life of trauma and the stigma of, oh, you know, you had been through this, so you're going to continue on that cycle with your child. I think that's so unfair to put that on someone mm. because I'm a person that I'm taking the steps to make sure that I'm mentally stable enough to be a parent um, and heal myself. And so going forward, you know, I might not be a perfect parent. No. Says the person that didn't do any therapy while they were in prison and is sitting here saying that their trauma, like, I'm sorry, I'm so tired of the word trauma being thrown around on social media. Trauma to me is devastating and it's really tough. And there are a lot of people that are victim of, uh, victims of trauma. And there are so many that had actual trauma that did not unalive their parent. I'm going to do the best I can and make educated choices with my child and have the support to do so. Yeah. As someone who has been through some trauma, definitely nothing like what you have been through, but I can confidently say that, you know, when we had our daughter, it was very much like there's so much love that I felt was taken from me mm -hmm. that it's like I want to give her mm -hmm. so much love. And it's like there's just there's no part of the trauma that mm -hmm. ever is like 
gets in between us. It's right. just like there's just so much love you want to give them and so much happiness. And you're like, I want to show you that like you are so special and you mean so much. And it's like the trauma has you know nothing to do with the relationship you have exactly. with your daughter. But exactly. also when you're talking about generational trauma being passed down, it gets passed down when it's not acknowledged or addressed. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, no one's really aware of the trauma, which, mm-hmm. you know, up until, you know, past five, 10 years where mental health has really become something that's been far more normalized. Mm-hmm. Generational trauma was something that was commonly passed down. But mm-hmm. again, like you're clearly doing the work, as we've said, you know, you're, you're, you're clearly doing whatever you can to address your trauma, mm-hmm. to face your trauma head on, both individual therapy, couples therapy. So mm-hmm. it's, again, that's just the internet, you know, mm-hmm. wanting to <laughs> be heard. But yeah, you know, someone's projecting some pain from their parent they mm-hmm. haven't addressed. They just want to put that on you. Put that somewhere else. You know? I feel like last time you were with us, you gave us a name for like a potential baby. Oh, really? Did I? What was that name? I don't even remember. remember. I, I don't remember, remember the name either. Do you have a name picked Do out? we have a name? We have a couple of names okay. that are in mind, but we haven't. Set you want to workshop them? No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it, if I can give you one piece of advice, it is do not share your name with. Can already leak the baby name. This is not exciting. And they oh, suck gosh. and they're awful, and you're like, they, put, they project okay. all that. Yeah, a little too late for that. But we've already kind of shared uh, the name ideas. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah like, uh, one of the names that we that we love and um, uh, have potentially chosen is Aurora. And love, um, beautiful. Love that name. It's a beautiful name. Uh, that was something that we like had talked about like way back, you know, six seven years ago when we first. Okay, I'm gonna be really honest with y'all. Listening to her and having these hosts allow her to lie and exaggerate and mislead, sitting here and not pushing back or asking any of like the real hard questions is extremely frustrating. So I'm going to include this section called The Act where she says a couple things about that movie as a closeout to this video. Obviously, pregnancy does affect intimacy between uh, couples in a relationship. How do you guys navigate that? What's that been like? I mean, for me, our, I, I want to say my exhaustion level, uh, you know, if I'm tired or something like that has affected a little bit um, recently. But um, our, our intimate life had not changed. Okay. Um, in the first or second trimester. Yeah, yeah I, I would say there's been like almost no changes. Like the fire's <laughs> still burning bright. And- you know, once we have the baby and, you know, once I'm off parole, you know, I really want to go to Europe, um, to Rome and just start traveling. You know, I'm trying to do more like um, influencer videos on social media, fashion, because when I first came out of prison, apparently I was very not on fashionable. Oh, no. um, like the, the outfits that, that I wore and oh, stuff no. like that. Like I had friends to let me know what was trendy. But as for everyday things, I am so far behind. So now I've been sort of Googling and trying to figure out what and follow the trendy stuff um, and make cute little makeup videos and tutorials and stuff. Fun. <laughs> Has it been like crazy learning all the makeup that's out there, learning how to like do your own makeup? Yeah, glam? I, mean, I had to learn that, you know, uh, you have to find what's right for you. Yeah. So I bought a lot of makeup and have gone through a lot of brands, but finally found the right one for me. Ken, have you watched the I know you said you watched. No, the- I didn't watch the act. Okay. Um, I, I felt the same way. Like I had seen the original documentary. I'd seen multiple other like subsidiary documentaries when we first met and then by the time the act came out like every time i would watch like the newer documentaries it's like it's traumatizing for me for even me to watch like sure. it's it's a very sad um traumatic story so i didn't want to see it again and again and again it, make- it was dramatized for tv sure. right. versus where like documentaries are more in depth or so I, I i didn't watch it yeah. yesterday she spoke at uh san francisco state and the entire auditorium like standing ovation cheering clapping like chanting wow. her name like every- it was very new um it was wonderful um it was so good to like actually like share my thoughts about prison reform and advocacy because it, in so many ways when you're doing an interview for for this or for that or for this today show whatever their line of questioning is what they want it to be mm-hmm. so at least for this the line of questioning was for a very specific reason gypsy rose is absolutely diabolical she does not deserve to sit on any stage or couch or platform or freaking oversized chair she does not deserve it whoever god is to you may god help this child because it is going to be an absolute train wreck to watch what's going to happen for this poor kid um so shame on nick and shame on his wife for allowing this nonsensical circus to come back onto their platform and um I find the whole thing disgusting, but either way, I will have other content not related to this podcast coming up. 
Um, and we're just gonna keep on moving. I'm sure this video is gonna be really long, so um, I appreciate y'all if you stuck out and listened to the whole thing. But I've had quite enough of this little gremlin and her voice and Kenny boy here for a while. But either way, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.